Okay, I would like to start uh, from the last week class, uh, still to revise what we have learned, and then we can learn a new lesson today. The main lesson was formation of urine. And last week, we have learned the formation of urine happened in three steps. It happens in three steps. What are the three steps? Ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption, and secretion. So let's see uh, these three events. Okay, this was the note I've written last week, ultrafiltration, uh, selective reabsorption, and secretion. So ultrafiltration takes place in the glomerulus. Selective reabsorption uh, takes place in the proximal convoluted tubules, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. Uh, secretion uh, also happen in proximal and distal convoluted tubule. Okay, ultrafiltration, which take place in the glomerulus due to the pressure in the blood, afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole, and uh, fluid can escape from the pores of the capillary because capillaries of the glomerulus are a little bit special than other places. They have more openings called pores. We call it porous, having pores, we call it porous. So then uh, more fluid and molecule can uh, leak out from the pores due to a blood pressure. This is also facilitated by having a, a, the black color layer here, you can see glomerular basement membrane. The basement membrane is the real filter. So even though uh, molecules leak out, only small molecule can pass through the glomerular basement membrane. After that, inside of the glomerulus, there is cells called podocyte, and in between podocyte, there are slits, kind of a gaps or opening. So this is important. The pores are important and the glomerular basement membrane, which is the real filter. Glomerular basement membrane is the real filter. So the molecule which can pass to the Bowman capsule are decided by the basement membrane and slit. After that, we have learned uh, only from the pores, number one here, fluid can leak. And then the membrane is the second one. Selected molecule, large molecule cannot go up, go uh, to the Bowman capsule. And then small molecule can pass to the Bowman capsule. And these uh, slits still allow molecules to pass. And we have learned small molecule can pass into the filtrate. Cells cannot pass. Cells cannot pass. Even uh, a large protein-like thing cannot pass. So what are the main thing can pass? Uh, nutrition, nutrient molecules, amino acid, and glucose, urea, waste, metabolic waste product, water, ions, sodium chloride, hydrogen, potassium, and bicarbonate iron. But there are other ions like pos uh, phosphorus-like thing can also pass. But here we mainly we concern sodium chloride, hydrogen, uh, bicarbonate and potassium. This ion can pass to the filtrate. After that, the filtrate uh, is similar to the plasma. Filtrate is not 100% similar, but we can say filtrate is similar to plasma. Right, then uh, we started to learn last week selective reabsorption. Selective reabsorption is Again, some of the molecules going into the blood. For example, uh, this is the 
circulation around the this represents the circulation around the nephron. So then still selective reabsorption means some of the selected molecule can pass from the filtrate. Filtrate is here, let's say inside here, and then into the blood. So this is called selective reabsorption. It can happen in proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. In these three places, selective reabsorption can take place. Now, what is the most important place? The most important place is proximal convoluted tubule. Why is that? Because large number of molecules reabsorb into the blood from prox proximal convoluted tubule. For that, we have learned the proximal convoluted tubule uh, has adaptation. What are the adaptation? The, the border, lumen side of the border uh, has a higher membrane because membrane make this villi. So these are called just like in the digestive system, uh, they are called villi. And uh, it has a lot of uh, mitochondria. Mitochondria provide energy for active transport. So I mentioned a large amount of water, almost like a 70% uh, transport by passive process osmosis. Osmosis is a passive process transport uh, this way. And uh, most of the nutrition like amino acid, they can uh, pass by facilitated diffusion, glucose 100% reabsorbed by active transport and uh, most of the ions they can again reabsorb. So what are the iron reabsorb? And here I mention, uh, I add this one to explain what are the ions uh, reabsorb, proximal connectibule, potassium, uh, bicarbonate ion, and sodium ion. Sodium ion is active, and this too is passive, especially bicarbonate ion. So you will see how ion can pass passively. Okay, then uh, I mentioned uh, the filtrate get more concentrated. So the first place here it filtered similar to plasma and this second place uh, proximal convoluted tubule, it get more concentrated because large amount of water reabsorb. So in this area, when large amount of water reabsorb, the volume decrease, solute concentration increase. As a result, they get concentrated. And also last week, uh, we finished uh, from this process, selective reabsorption in the loop of Henle. Uh, we haven't done uh, what is exactly happening, but I only mentioned uh, it is mainly important for the conservation of water, uh, water absorption. So loop of Henle, the main function is absorption of water. Some desert animal, they have a long uh, loop of Henle because they can, conserve, uh, they can conserve more water. And human, you have seen Juxtra glomerular nephron. Uh, they have a, they, uh, this uh, Juxtra glomerular nephron have long uh, loop of Henle. Maybe evolutionary adaptation uh, we also lived in certain dry condition in the past. So to conserve water, we also have certain level of uh, long loop of Henle to conserve the water. Uh, right, now uh, what we learn, loop of Henle has descending uh, arm and the ascending arm. Descending arm going down, ascending arm going up. And uh, epithelium is not cuboidal like uh, proximal convoluted tubule. It is more so simple squamous epithelium. Right, that was the lesson we did last week. I quickly revised uh, that you can uh, continue from today with that knowledge. Uh, let's see 
in the next section how we can learn about the conservation of water in the loop of Henley. Okay, uh, I again draw this uh, loop of Henley. This is the ascending limb of the loop of Henley. And descending, and this is the ascending limb, right? The thickness of arm is also different, uh, but it's not that much important for us the thickness of the arm, but we only, uh, we should only know this is descending and this is ascending. Direction of the flow, let's go down and it goes up. Okay, uh, another important thing, uh, I mentioned uh, mostly when it comes to uh, plants, we call water potential. Water potential is the amount of water in a solute. So water potential is the amount of water in a solute. That means pure water has the highest water potential. But when it comes to certain uh, lessons like a kidney, uh, we don't use water potential. We are trying to use a term which is related to the solute. So we can, uh, we can also consider about solute. When more solute, osmolarity is high. Osmolarity directly related to the amount of solute in a volume. If you take blood, uh, the osmolarity is 300 milliosmol. So this is the given uh, osmolarity of blood, 300 milliosmol. Okay, then uh, we, uh, we can understand if filtrate forms, and as I said, filtrate is similar to a uh, similar to the similar to a plasma, then the osmolarity, three hundred milli or small per liter. This is the osmolarity of blood. Now filtrate has three hundred milli osmolarity of the blood. But you realized proximal um, convoluted tubule, uh, some amount of water reabsorbed, then the osmolarity increase. Now if the filtrate start here, that's a starting point. So, and it goes down, what is going to happen? Descending uh, limb of loop of Henle has transporters for water. So from here to here, the cells, are rich in water transport proteins. Uh, this word is not mentioned in resource book, but, but if you want, it's called aquaporin. So I just write a mark, not in resource book. So these are called aquaporin. So aquaporin function is take water and uh, I just draw here the, again the blood vessel. Small vessel. And you can see if there's a water molecule here, they can pass into the blood. Likewise, what is moving from here to here. Now, what will happen if large amount of water moves from the filtrate into the blood. It gets further concentrated because no solute reabsorb. It's only water. It's only reabsorb water.
only reabsorb water. That's very important. The descending limb is specialized to reabsorb water. Then uh, the filtrate get very concentrated. It get very concentrated. So it is almost at this point, 1,200 milliosmol per liter. So it become very concentrated. Now, the filtrate moving upward. Ascending lip of loop of NLA, they have uh, transporters for sodium chloride. Then this place, it can remove sodium and chloride out. Now here, sodium chloride, here sodium chloride, here again sodium chloride, here sodium chloride. Now what will happen? Solute removed from the filtrate. Descending limb remove water, more solute left. Ascending limb remove solute. So then uh, when it come again to this place, the osmolarities, three million small per liter. Sodium chloride went out and also sodium chloride stay inside also this uh, space in between. Some of them stay inside this uh, space, interstitial area. Now by this way, large amount of water removed and sodium chloride also removed and the filtrate osmolarity doesn't change. So this is the strategy used in the loop of Henle to conserve water. So this is very important, uh, especially for certain animals. Uh, they have a long uh, loop of Henle and they can uh, reabsorb large number of water and they can uh, conserve water. For example, kangaroo rat in desert area. Kangaroo rat in desert area, the loop of Henle is a very long one. Right. Now we discuss selective reabsorption. Selective reabsorption takes place in Proximal convoluted tubule, the most important place, which is absorb 100% glucose, large number of sodium chloride, large number of uh, water, like more than 70%. Remaining water, try to take into the body from the loop of Henle. Now this filtrate passing to the distal convoluted tubule. So this still convoluted tubule is this place. Now distal convoluted tubule can further reabsorb molecules if it is still excess in the filtrate. So they can uh, still reabsorb what is left in the filtrate. What is left in the filtrate, still water. Water. Now you'd be surprised, water reabsorb many, many places, proximal, loop of Henle and distal. If you want to get an idea why that much of water reabsorb, in human, 200 liters filter per day. 200 liters filter per day. But what is our urine output? Urine output may be one to two liter per day. So urine is one to two liter. 
That means 198, 99 to 198, reabsorb. That's why uh, it is important to reabsorb water in these three areas. How does uh, it maintain same osmolarity? Okay, I think uh, that's what I explained. Uh, okay, I explain again. Uh, I give, uh, I take numbers. I take numbers. Uh, let's assume uh, the volume entered into this place, 10 liter. Volume entered 10 liter. From this 10 liter, let's assume uh, sodium chloride solute is, uh, uh, I didn't uh, calculate the, the numbers, let's say that randomly 200, 200 whatever, 200 unit. Now water volume is 10 liter, the solute 200. When it comes to this place, uh, to the end, I said, large volume of water reabsorb because descending limb is specialized only to reabsorb water. Then what will happen? The volume become two liter. Let's make a random numbers. 10 liter become now two liters because eight liters reabsorb. What happened to the solute remain unchanged. 200 unit because I said clearly no solute reabsorb. If no solute reabsorb, it is 200. 200 remain 200. Only reabsorb water, then 10 liter become two liter. So then osmolarity is very high. Then it's going to the ascending limb. Now ascending limb, the two liter, starting volume is two liter, no water reabsorbed, then the volume remain unchanged two liter. So it is unchanged, not absorbed, ascending limb is two liter. I said sodium chloride removed from the filtrate sodium chloride removed from the filtrate. If this is the case, 200 unit now become, uh, let's say 50 gram, 50 unit, right, sorry. So if I really calculate the 200, uh, to 10 liter, and this one is a uh, two liter to a 50. And if I really make an assumption, the cal calculation, I can bring uh, same number here and here, but here is not the same number. I have to uh, uh, here 20 and here is uh, 25. So if I want to uh, make it 20, then it should be 40, right? Okay, 40. Now let's calculate uh, 200 divided by 10, 20. 40 divided by 2, 20. Now it's the same. The volume and uh, the solute to the volume, same, 20, 20. So that's what happening. Initially, volume is high, solute is high. When it comes to the end of the loop of Henle, Volume decrease, solute remains same. When it goes up, volume uh, same, then uh, solute reduced. Okay, if you have a bad weather, uh, you can leave, but apparently no thundering in Colombo at the moment. Uh, anyway, uh, it is okay. Yeah, you can leave uh, if it is uh, Colombo, we don't have, but I don't know other areas.
Okay, uh, this is the method. Uh, osmolarity remains same, starting and the end osmolarity. Now I also mentioned uh, what is happening at distal convoluted tubule. You need to remember this thing. water reabsorb and what are the other things reabsorb still uh, sodium chloride and bicarbonate ion there are still a lot of sodium chloride and bicarbonate ions in the filtrate so distal convoluted tubule reabsorb water, sodium chloride, and bicarbonate. Now after reabsorb, uh, at this place, fluid is leaving to this end of this uh, distal convoluted tubule. Filtrate is very concentrated. It is almost like urine. Filtrate is very concentrated, almost like urine. Then uh, filtrate enter into the distal uh, collecting duct, sorry, CD. This is the collecting duct. Filtrate enter into the collecting duct. All right, so the summary of selective reabsorption it happened in the proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. It's better that you remember what are the things reabsorb water, sodium chloride, bicarbonate ion. And here, proximal convoluted tubule, 100% glucose, 100% amino acid, and large amount of sodium chloride, large amount of water and rest of the ions like potassium and so these are the ions water glucose amino acid reabsorb and here reabsorb water and sodium chloride reabsorb but sodium chloride from this place uh, they can uh, go to the blood or they can stay in the uh, tissue area but we consider luvo fenley specialized to reabsorb water. Okay. Uh, uh, it is better, not the better, you need to remember selective reabsorption, what exactly reabsorb proximal convoluted tubule, lupofele and distal convoluted tubule. At least this summary, if you can remember, it is important for your exam. Okay, now when it come to a third uh, process, secretion. Before I move to secretion, I would like to uh, highlight function of the kidney. So function of the kidney, I need to bring here for for a reason. For example, one the main function is uh, removal of metabolic waste. Example, urea. So shall we name this as a one the best function? The second function, osmoregulation. If you look at the title of this lesson, exc excretion and osmoregulation. 
So excretion is removal of metabolic waste product and osmoregulation is maintain uh, water and solute in the blood. By doing that, if solute and water maintained correct way, that pressure is in the volume of the blood. can maintain in the right level because pressure of the blood is due to the water level. When more, more water in the blood, pressure is increased. And uh, if right solute and the right volume there, then the volume is, uh, volume is also there. Because if large amount of solute inside the blood, volume goes up. Example, if you want to try, eat a lot of salt. When you eat a lot of salt, you need to drink a lot of water. When you need, when you drink a lot of water, your blood volume increase. So osmoregulation is maintaining of correct balance of solute and the water in the blood. By doing that, our blood pressure and blood volume same. Now these are the main mechanism, main functions of the kidney. But there are other uh, functions. So here one, two, under that we can say this is three, uh, four and five. Just two osmoregulation, but it's the same three, four and five. And this one, let's say osmoregulation is this, it's the second one. And uh, this one we consider as a third, both pressure and volume as a one. Okay, I remove fourth and fifth one. Now we have a split into a three functions. One is metabolic waste removal. Second one is osmoregulation. Within osmoregulation, uh, pressure and volume, that's indirectly, we can maintain as a result, we also take as a one function. Now there's a fourth, fifth, sixth, fourth, fifth and sixth functions are given. One of the fourth, fifth and sixth function, now sixth function, maintain blood pH. Have to maintain blood pH. And a fifth one, uh, kidneys also help to maintain red blood cell, erythrocyte or red blood cell level. And uh, if the pressure decrease, kidney help to increase the pressure. In case pressure decrease due to some reason, kidney is still trying to increase the pressure. Now why I take this one? Because if you look the uh, your resource book, these things are given. Maintaining electrolytes and water balance. That's osmoregulation, solute and the water balance. Then the second one, metabolic waste product removal. So we place this as a first excretion of waste product is the first one, and this is the second one. And uh, controlling blood volume, blood pressure. So we take this as a third one. And regulation of uh, pH, we consider this as a six. Secretion of, erit okay. Production and secretion of, okay. This one is a uh, fourth and fifth. I will not uh, go into detail for the fourth and fifth at the moment. Uh, I just explain you in an easy way, fourth one, uh, what it says here, production and secretion of renin and enzyme important in control of blood pressure. I will explain later, not here. So basically, now you can understand, okay, these are the function of the kidney. Number one, removal of metabolic waste product, urine, uh, urea. Number two, osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is 
maintain correct amount of water and solute. By doing that, our blood pressure and the volume we can manage in a right way. And the next one, uh, if the pressure drop, kidney can still increase the pressure. Then kidney is also important for the production of red blood cell in bone marrow and kidney also important in keeping the blood pH. So these six uh, functions are mentioned here, but it's very difficult to understand uh, when it says like this. So we have to first come one by one later because we haven't finished secretion. Right. So we discuss one by one these things. Uh, then uh, I'm going to uh, explain one function of the kidney that we have learned in the selective reabsorption. Selective reabsorption, we have learned selective reabsorption. By understanding selective reabsorption, we can learn one function. What is a function? Now it's further mentioned in the book. Distal tubule also contribute. Uh, biology is something, uh, this word is, uh, forget it, uh, it's something came uh, mistakenly to pH regulation by control secretion of H plus and reabsorption of bicarbonate. reabsorption of bicarbonate and secretion of H plus. Okay, let's see uh, what's the meaning of that. So what I said uh, in the last 